well very dear students and my viewers once again hello and a very warm good afternoon because with me the time is that of good afternoon uh, today i decided to record a video for the help of uh, researchers working at the bs level at the uh, ms level only uh, so that is why the topic of today's recording is going to be how to write a research proposal i know it's a big issue but i shall try to keep it as simplified as possible and also i would love to provide some simplified guidance for the students and remove some of the myths with which they are suffering from so that is why i'm entering into and making you enter with me also on the topic how to write a research proposal uh, well it is specific to literature it's it's not including you know linguistics or it's not including any other sciences it's about literature only so the very first slide asks us some question when we want to start our research proposal what should we ask ourselves or what type of answers to the questions we should be seeking for the very first question is what do we want to study i mean i must be clear before i go further in writing research proposal i should know what is the area i am studying what is the kind of literature that i'm going to study or what is the kind of explanations which i want to give and after i have decided this i should go to answer the second question that is why is the topic important i mean i have to justify first of all with myself why i'm going to do this research what is the importance of this research or how this research would be looking very important to the people as well then how is it significant when the subject area is covered in my class i mean in every degree research degree especially these days we have courses that is the course content taught before conducting the research and in that course certain texts are taught certain theoretical sections are taught and therefore the researcher is to see uh, how his area of research or his topic of research or his mode of research going to contribute further into the researches or into the studies which he has already done in his course work and then he should know what is the problem going on in the society in the academic field in other fields that his research will be going to solve and in the same way how does it build upon the research already conducted on the topic i mean there should be a constant relationship or a type of similarity though with diversity that the research which you will conduct should be should be resting upon the shoulders of the giants and should be also contributing into the researches these giants have already done and then the last question that one should ask to ourselves uh, what exactly should i plan to do and can i get it done in time available so that's going to be the planning area and then it's going to be the timing in which something to be conducted or completed so these are the things which a researcher should ask himself before he goes to write his research proposal and similarly the researcher should also know what is the importance of this research proposal because some of the people may ask that if they have to write research thesis why the universities are asking them to prepare a research proposal also the answer is it is used to establish whether there is there is expertise to support your proposed area of research i mean when you would like to prepare your research proposal you will come to know whether the text is available you want to work on the materials or the critical materials are available certain theories or certain practical guides are available or some experts like professors are available supervisors are available in that area only then your proposal uh, will be acceptable it means that while preparing proposal we come to know that the thing which we are thinking is workable or not and that is why research proposal is set to be prepared similarly number 2 it forms part of the assessment of your application i mean when you prepare a research proposal you come to know how much your work will be good or how much your work will be useful that assessment or that evaluation is also provided the research proposal you submit as part of your application is just the starting point as your ideas evolve your proposal research is likely to change it means that 
research proposal makes one background, one set of values, and it prepares us that we can work in this way or that way. This idea can change as well. This idea can evolve as well, can develop as well. So that is why it's very much necessary that at least one idea should be developed through research proposal. And that is the purpose of research proposal. The last important of research proposal is, the goal of research proposal is twofold. To present and justify the need to study a research problem <clears throat> and to, I'm sorry, and to present the practical ways in which the proposed study should be conducted. I mean, research proposal provides us a chance that we can tell the supervisor, we can tell the examiner the justification of the proposal of the research we want to conduct. And also, we come to know whether there will be some ways and means to conduct this research, some practical ways will be available or they will not be available. So that is why research proposal should be made even before conducting your research thesis. And the most of the time people have been asking me how long it has to be. There is no particular length fixed of anything. I mean, as I always say, that neither is the length of introduction, literature review, or research methodology, or theoretical framework fixed. There's no length fixed for that, but still some of the parameters can be involved. Hours. First of all, the research proposal can be of four to seven pages long, or in the shape of words, if you want to, want to count the words, then it can be from 2,000 words to 3,500 words. By the way, the research proposal which I prepared for my postdoctoral study, it was just 2,000 words long and it was accepted immediately without any reviews or changes. And if this doesn't satisfy about the length of the proposal, then you should read this passage given this slide very carefully. I have highlighted some of the words, for example, extensive literature review. The research proposal has to have a literature review and then the establishment of the need of doing this research and after that providing a rationale and then detailed methodology or the ultimate outcomes or the benefits of the research. If you are able to describe these things within the limit of 2000 words or four to seven pages, then the length of research proposal is determined. So it's not necessary to think about the length. It's necessary that you should try to cover these areas that will justify the length of research proposal. Now to start with research proposal, the real goal is that we must think three basics of research proposal. The first is, what do you plan to accomplish? I mean, we have to be very clear and we should know what is the research problem that we are going to answer? What is the research question that we are going to reply with? This is the very thing that should come first of all. I mean, we should decide what are we going to do? And then secondly, why do you want to do the research? I mean, the reason, what was the necessity of considering a particular question? What was the necessity or what is the necessity to take up a particular text or take up a particular theory? What's the reason behind that socially, politically, literally? <laughs> what will be the benefit of doing all this thing? This should be the why of the research. And then comes the how. How are you going to do that? I mean, what is the kind of methodology? Whether the research will be doable or not? How you will investigate all that? And how you will be able to present your results and your findings as well? It means that every research proposal should be consisting of at least these three basic concepts of research. The what of the research, why of the research, and the how of the research. Then, of course, uh, you write the title of the research and introduction begins. The title of the research should be very significantly designed. It should be clearly indicating the purpose of your research. And it should also be answering the question which you want to answer. It means basis are the questions. And questions cannot be formulated unless we are able to understand clearly what our idea of research is going to be. Well, my students always ask, what should be my topic of research? So that is not going to be the first thing. The first thing is to understand the question you want to ask, the type of research you want to conduct, the already available material you want to conserve. And after that, all these things combine together in order to formulate a title. And when you are formulating your title, definitely you need to write the introduction. Normally, introduction should have 
these three, four things. For example, background and the issues of your proposed research. I mean, you should mention, you should mention, or you should know at least what has been happening in research in your area, uh, uh, which you are going to do in your area. What were the issues people mostly discussed and what is the new issue you want to discuss? Identify your discipline. I mean, in introduction, you have to write what is the area you have taken up? Is it post-colonial literature area? Is it going to be South Asian literature? Is it English literature? Is it American literature? Is it post-war literature? Is it post-modern literature? Or what type of discipline you have taken in order to start with? Similarly, you can also talk about poetry or you can talk about the theater studies as well, even movie studies. And then you should write a short literature review. This is very difficult area to do so, rather it's a more intelligent area to do so. And for this purpose, the researcher should read different aspects of uh, literature review and different ways of formulating literature review. I have already recorded some of the views about literature review. Uh, the students can take a little pain by watching these videos and then the possibility of writing of literature review is there. Not only these three things, but also we need to give a debate. Uh, we need to give a detail of the of the debate uh, about the researches, about the theories which are going on, and how people have done so far. If these things are present in our introduction, it is complete. And how these things are done? For example, first of all, state the research problem. I mean, what is going on because of which you have decided to do this research? Explain it very well. Then present the rationale, the reason of your research, and indicate very well why are you going to do that, what will be the benefit of that, and what prompted you to do so. I mean, what is significant in your research because of which you think it's worth doing? That thing should be mentioned by you in the second part of your introduction. Then you should discuss major issues and problems of the field which are going on. And you can mention here some of the people who have addressed to these problems. I know you are going to address the question, particular question, of the problems and that is what you need to mention the part of second of the of the introduction then you should explain the methods key sources how they will contribute to your analysis of the topic i mean first look for the sources which are available uh, the sources mean the the web pages the books or the uh, you can say the digital books also or it can be the researches the thesis or the repositories as our hec has a very good repository or the university libraries for example they may be having you must mention that these sources are available or at least indicate or find out where the sources are and then try to explain what methodology you are going to, going to use in your introduction how you are going to conduct the research Delimitation area, that is the boundaries of the area. I mean, you need to mention what you plan to study and what you need to exclude. There are two ways to do so. Sometime a writer has written 20 books and we find that our research may be only related to five books according to the question or three books or only one, one book. That is the delimitation. Remaining ones we don't need to study in order to answer our question. And same is the case with the, for example, sometime we have the similar ideas being discussed in poetry as well as in drama or in fiction, we can also there talk about which, which part of literature, which part of genre we shall be taking and which part we shall be excluding. And where we shall remain and where we shall go, that's what we are going to describe about. Then if some terminology is difficult in our a study that we may be providing interpretation of that concepts and terminology as well. This is the second part of the introduction, what it should include. In the third part of the introduction, these things should be talked about. What is the central research problem? I mean, we should explain what is our research problem that we are working on. What is the topic of study related to that research problem? We are topic and our problem, how they are related with each other, what methods will be used in order to analyze the research problem, I mean how the analysis will be taking place, why is this important research, what is its significance and why should someone reading the proposal care about, that should also be justified in the ending portion of introduction of the research proposal. And after that, we will be writing certain other things, but before that, we should know what are the cares we can take in order to write a literature review 
and even the research proposal. In both cases, five Cs are quite workable. For example, first of all, <clears throat> when you are writing a research proposal or when you are writing a literature review at that time, you must cite very carefully and always cite. I mean, who is the writer you are using? What is the opinion of that writer you are using? And how that opinion is going to be very useful for your research? One of the techniques is to compare various arguments, theories, methodologies, and findings expressed by other people's literature. You may be comparing them in that way the evaluation takes place, who does better and what is being done better. And you should also try to mention which authors, which theorists or researchers are going to agree on one specific problem and which type of approaches for analysis they have been using and the same you will be using. You can also use the contrasting technique. I mean, you should mention how the arguments being used by you, how the themes of the approaches mentioned by different research scholars before you, how they are opposite to each other how they agree or how they disagree. This is the way to prepare literature review. And then, of course, literature review is going to be part of your research proposal. So it can be said about research proposal as well. Some of the critique of literature should also be given. But this critique of literature does not mean that you will be discussing your primary source or primary text. It actually means which arguments are more persuasive. I mean, you need to find out some of the arguments. Uh, given by different authors and then evaluate them whether which one is good and which one is not that good. Then which approaches, finding methodologies seem most reliable, valid, appropriate and why? Mention some of the methods or the things used by the other people and you can also say that this is good and this is not good. Attention to the verbs you are using to describe what an author says. For example, when you use the verb describe, it has a different meaning narrate it has got a different meaning evolve has got a different meaning though for some time uh, we have the similar type of words and similar type of meaning but then the verbs should be very carefully used okay then it is the connection that you need to establish in your area i mean if you are writing a literature review in the end of that you need to mention how that literature review how the ideas how the themes or how the theories and the findings of the people are relevant to your work and how you will be able to synthesize it in you, into your own research. In that way, you can prepare a better literature view, you can prepare a better research proposal. Research questions are really very important and according to our uh, title, the research questions should be formulated, uh, although we have a main question in our mind in the shape of research problem, but then it has to be divided into certain parts. For example, we can design one question that we are going to explore such and such thing. I mean, it's very much relevant to the topic. For example, if somebody has got the radical feminism in this topic, we can say, I'm going to explore in the text, in, in the writing of someone, whoever the writer is, how it is present there. And then uh, how the writer has portrayed that, whether through language, whether through theme, or through imagery, or through some uh, similes, or through some other means, how has the writer presented it. Same is the case with the, what do you understand out of that? I mean, this question also can be asked by you. And how much the author is similar or different with the other people, that can also be the part of research questions. But the first one is main and the remaining questions can be the auxiliary questions. So this is what you need to ask in your research question. And uh, I'm sorry to say, but most of the time in my country, some people even don't know how to design a question. They would write a question, but they would give the format of a positive thing. And they would not get, take the things explained. So one should go to the title and then to the literature review that one has developed and thus problem statement and after that think about writing a question write three four times then you will be able to understand are you representing or is your question representing everything which you want to do only then the question will be complete so be careful in designing your research question because research question is the thing which will determine your direction which will say where to go and where not to go in that way it will provide you a chance to remain focused so that is why the research question should be designed very carefully. Uh, then after research question, your research proposal should mention some research methodology. I mean, what are you going to do in order to conduct your research? For example, which theoretical sources you will be using? 
uh, which research approach you will be using, I mean, qualitative or quantitative, that's a research approach, that's not a research method. And then what research method you are going to use, I mean, will it be a content analysis, will it be a thematic analysis, will it be a contrapuntal analysis, or it will be a library research, or what type of other things you are going to employ uh, in qualitative research. We do have a number of other issues as well. So you need to, you need to describe as well what appropriate method you will be using. And then you will be discussing the advantages as well as the limitations of the particular approach of the method, but whatever is useful for you, you will be using by describing the research methodology. So in this way, four parts of the research proposal are covered. Let's go to the fifth part. It's rather the fifth part people mostly don't describe, but it's very much necessary. Uh, you need to mention uh, what are the uh, topics of your research or the chapters of your research and when, what you're going to do in those chapters and what time you will be using for that. When a full-time study, your research should be completed within three years. I mean, it can be applied to PhD or it can be applied to a longer research project which may be completing in three years. So three years should be divided. I mean, uh, what time you are going to use for writing a literature review, what time you are going to use for collecting data, and then what time you are going to use in order to uh, you know, analyze your data and then how much time you will take in, in writing the findings and the conclusions. But if you are doing a part-time research, as uh, research papers are there, as MPhil research theses are there, um, it can be done, you know, it, it can be done in a longer time. Because, you know, if you are a hundred-time scholar, you have full time to pay. And if you are just a part-time scholar, you can have more time also. So in that way, the timings varies. But this is mostly up to the universities to decide how much time they will give for your for their MPhil scholars. For MPhil scholars, maybe six months for writing, maybe six months for evaluation. That's an ideal time, but nobody is able to complete that. For PhD, it may be seven years or 10 years, along with the coursework conducted and completion of the research, uh, everything like that is, is within seven years. So in that way, you need to plan something, how you are going to do that. The benefit of this planning <laughs> for the people who are serious is that they will be constantly looking whether they are going according to the plan or they are going to lose their grip on that. So that's a kind of, uh, you know, like an alarm or a kind of channel who stops you and puts you a question, okay, are you going on your time or not? So make a time frame of your research as well. That is the fifth part of the research proposal. Uh, the sixth part is going to be bibliography. Bibliography is the references as well as the, you know, uh, bibliography we can say references are uh, only uh, for those articles and text or the books which you have really quoted these are said to be the references and then sometimes we don't quote we just read and uh, we put the idea there uh, and if you have used any of the books or articles for that purpose without giving reference about them or, or you don't want to give a direct quotation from them it's simply the opinion you have taken here you can mention these books also so these would be called as the uh, you know, bibliography. So this is all about the research proposal. And uh, in the end of all that, this uh, the up to the slide, uh, up to point number six, it was uh, uh, slide number 13, actually, it was all what should be inside the research proposal. And next comes, uh, which are the mistakes which can make our research proposal very bad. And we could be suffering because, again, the supervisors will ask to prepare and our time will be wasted, our energy will be wasted. So. In that way, you can come up with the, the idea what things you should be avoiding. I mean, if you are not concise, you are rambling here and there, wandering here and there, definitely uh, there will be a problem with you and you won't be able to conduct it, so we should be concise all the time. We should all the time cite references. Without the references, uh, we may be having a trouble. In order to keep focused, in order to keep grounded our research, we need to keep on giving references and giving, talking about the landmarks of that area as well, important things of that area as well. If we don't do so, our research proposal is weak one. We need to delimit our boundaries also. From the very first day, we should think which thing we are going to talk about and which thing we are not going to talk about. So if we do not do so, we will be rambling and wandering again, our research will be bad. That is why this is the third failure we should avoid. Then comes the fourth failure, failure to develop a coherent and persuasive argument. This is something very unique which possibly my students may not be understanding. 
I can give you one idea for that. For example, if I go into my class and I have to teach five chapters of a novel to my class, there may be multiple things in those five chapters. Could be themes, could be characters, could be plot as well, could be about the biography of the writer, anything could be there. But if I tell my students that I shall be teaching to them through these five chapters only the character of the villain or that of the protagonist, and in that way, they will also remain focused on that. And I will also remain focused on that. As a result, all in all those five chapters, only those things will be read out, which will be supportive to the idea whether the hero is good or bad or the villain is good or bad. So I will not be talking about the plot. And even if I talk, I will talk only with reference to the hero's good and bad. So in that way, we must know how our things can go coherent. The idea or the question or the problem which you have highlighted in the beginning of introduction of your research, it should be present in each and every paragraph. Maybe it is literature review, maybe it is methodology, maybe it is a theoretical framework. Everywhere the same problem, same question should be visible, not in the written form, but behind the lines that this is the thing you are going to do. And that will be a coherent and persuasive type of argument. If you don't do so, your research proposal is a failure. Then it is sloppy or imprecise writing or poor grammar. Definitely, I don't talk about that. You know, viewers and students, you know very well, grammatically wrong things do not pay very much. And the attention goes to that instead of going to your work. So that is why you must uh, run a very good grammar check. And uh, you should also take help from the tool which is these days available on internet. Many tools are available. Grammarly, I have listened from my other students uh, that it goes very well. So grammatically, uh, typos, other mistakes should not be there because it could be also one of the failing components of your research proposal. Too much details on minor issues, but not enough details on major issues. That's something one stu student should be very careful of. For example, if you think that your search has, this is the major thing, major question you are talking about. That thing should be explained in detail. But if certain minor things are there, you should pay much attention. For example, as in research proposal, literature review needs maximum of your attention. More attention should be paid to that. More writing should be done about that. But the other areas like uh, what's going to be research methodology or what's going to be the, you know, theoretical framework or delimitations, the, the kind of explanation is not required. It could be described in, in, in a brief manner. So in that way, uh, attention should be paid where it is necessary. So these things should be avoided. These are, I think, uh, three of these things are here and three things are here. Six things should be avoided in order to make your research proposal a failure. And here we reach to the end. Thank you very much, folks, for watching all this. I hope something has contributed to you, something you have learned out of that. And because you have learned, because you have found it interesting, I presume, do not fail to click the subscribe button. And yes, you can highlight your questions on YouTube comment section or even in the Facebook comment section. You can uh, comment on this this way of preparing research proposal or you can suggest me even to make it better so thank you very much for all that and once again good afternoon